Good afternoon, good evening. Uh, 7 pm on the dot, Jonesy. On the dot, mate, 1% of the Welcome it, to Rugby Ames at Mad Monday. And it's it's a very emotional show tonight. It's the last ever show in the shed of love tonight, Jonesy. Are you feeling a little bit of emotion? I feel a lot of emotion, mate, and I think the word for this week for me is inspiration. Obviously, I've been pretty low and I've been sustained by my faith, family and all friends and all that. And I've always got a positive outlook, but I must... I, I take my hat off to you this week, Simo. You've, uh, you've, in, you've impressed me three times. You've inspired me three times. Oh, g- g- give, me, give me the three, then. Well, one of them, we had a conversation about you being nervous and you said you never got nervous. It's an extension of what we talked about last week. And we'll probably not go too much into it now unless you want to, but... Uh, mate, we can go wherever you want to go. Yeah, well, I, I'm, I always think... I'll always get nervous. I always will be, but you changed my outlook on the way, to, on the way I think about certain things. The second one was you said you get up every morning yep. and you can't wait to get out of bed. It's like I it's love a brand it. new day and you absolutely love it. I buzz to get out of bed in the morning. I, bet I haven't been to bed today, so I, I, I'm kind of just still waiting. To, I can't wait for tomorrow morning. It's like doubly exciting. Why have you not been to bed? Because last night, um, basically, um, last night we, um, I was, I don't, I've got a, a mix, a really important mix to do for um, a big event I'm playing at this weekend called the Insomni Fest in Leeds and. I was I basically came to the studio last night and when you're DJing like I suppose in a way for yourself when you go through the motions in anything you, you're good at um, basically um, I'd, I'd banged a mix out steady away straight away in one hour smashed it off steady away easy done and then I was um, I was sat in that chair there in the green chair of love and uh, across on the floor I saw a little vinyl peeking out and it's a track called, um, called Commodore. It's by a guy called Commodore, and, old, and I thought to myself, ah, oh, I wish I'd put that tune on the mix, I wish I'd put it on, and I thought, you know what, this mix is pretty rubbish, it's better than most people could do, most of the DJs out there is, is much better than what they could do, but I thought, I'm better than that, what I'm going to do is, for this mix, I'm going to go back into my old tunes, and I'm going to re-record all my old vinyl in that sound really crackling, that real quality analogue sound, I'm going to record it into my computer, I'm going to master it, then I'm going to put a mix out that none of these little dweeby DJs who proclaim to be DJs when really they just download tunes and they've got Serato and all that kind of stuff. They've not done their apprenticeship. They're not real DJs, in my opinion. They should learn to mix on vinyl. <laughs> You're <laughs> wrong. Yeah, but it's, you know, it's, it's, it's tough, isn't it? Because I'm just glad I DJed when I DJed and I, and I learned the hard way. But, but I'm, I'm going to put a mix out. It'll be out straight after the show tonight. It'll be available um, through... My uh, my SoundCloud and Sleeping is cheating SoundCloud as well, and it's it's phenomenal. It's a phenomenal piece of music. It's, and normally a mix is like one hour twenty, at max an hour. This is one hour fifty because I had that many good tunes. Mate, and you spent ten hours doing it. I spent no ten sleep. hours doing it. No yeah. sleep, right? And that's just beyond what most people are willing to go to. Which sets me to my my third part, right? Which is when we went down to the studio, and uh, you've worked real hard for this. A lot of people yeah, yeah. have great ideas, right? And they come up with great plans, but they never execute them. Uh, and we went down there with Tony and some of your guys who uh, you've been a, a mentor, to really, and, a, and a really growing. And we saw this new studio. We're going to be in it in a couple of weeks, like you said. And I, I was just really excited. And you know what? I went home and I changed your name in my phone. What did you change it to? Well, it's always been Simo, and you might like think this is a bit weird, and I'm weird anyway. But I changed it from Simo right, to Alex Simmons. <laughs> I, I, I keep going on. Alex, Alex Simmons. Simmons, right, in the mix. I listen to an all star, obviously, and uh, the guy from X Factor. It makes me laugh every time I do it, but I all know you, Simo. Everybody knows you, Simo. But I'm thinking, you know what? You sound like a bit of a geezer, you know what I mean? You're like, Simo. I thought, you better than that, you make things happen. I'm changing it to Alex Simmons because. I, I appreciate that, Jonesy. You, you've, ta- you've taken it to the next level. I was, a really quick story, and you know, always about Bible and stuff, bibli- biblical inspiration. In Bible, when people go through certain changes, the names get changed, like Abraham got changed to Abraham, uh, Jacob got Abraham changed got changed to Abraham. They put a lot of thought into that Abraham. name change, didn't well, they? Well, listen, they've got almighty <laughs> changes, don't, don't blame me. Jacob got changed to Israel, and Saul got changed to Paul. Uh, and just for me, I thought you were Jacob going, got a better deal than everyone else, well, didn't he? Jacob actually He means, had two names, Jacob Israel, but, Saul Paul, Saul Paul, <laughs> Abraham Abraham. <laughs> well, Jacob means uh, to deceive, that's what it's real. Ah. So he got changed to Israel, that's where the name Israel comes from. Are, they, is that the, are the deceivers? Israel? Uh, no, no, Israel. Don't say that, you man. Well, I've, <laughs> I'm, just got, a, I'm just asking the question. Well, but flipping uh, Israel. Well, I'm asking Google Earthiness and sending <laughs> surfing to getting his bond and stuff in this uh, little garage. But no, 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 seriously. Um, well, names change when people change. And yeah, he took a big step forward this week. Anyway, bit of an inspiration yeah. for me. I yep. appreciate that. And uh, all buzzing. Got two great d- uh, guests on tonight. Uh, one of them's a superstar. He's only 22. Just couldn't believe it. I just asked him how old he is. He seems like he's like 32, mate, because he's been about... Because he looks like a old. farmer. Yeah. He's, 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 a, he's a 20, 40. He's 20, but he looks 40. Yeah. 
Yeah, like 40 20. Yeah, I like it. So we'll see where you're going with that. Um, he's, he's an absolute superstar, and he's, you know, he's a big friend at the show. He's been on loads of times, uh, and I like him more and more every time I see him. The other he's, guy. He's got great trainers. Josh always impressed me with his trainers. I'm a trainer, man. I'm a trainer freak, but he's always got good trainers. I can't, I can't, you know, I've got massive respect for that big man. We'll ask him. I know Sam Tonkis are big on training. We'll ask him where, if there's a bit of a theme going on, a bit something going on where I don't know. Like he represents, lads, doesn't he? He represents. Hey. Ah, see, <laughs> bit of a plug. Uh, the other guest we've got on tonight reminds me of what I'd look like if I was a bit better looking and I had. Uh, I was just thinking and, uh, that. And, uh, He's and, uh, like the good looking Buchanan, yeah, eh? If I had a straight face and a round head and a yeah. good head of hair and a, and a good bit, my beard's about the same. Uh, so, but it's good to see. I've, I've watched I, him uh, during World Cup. I thought I thought he was like six foot six. I thought he was bigger than me. I thought he, I thought he was huge. You see on telly, he looked massive. He does look huge, doesn't he? He looked huge on TV. But it's all about fighting dog as we'll, uh, we'll probably uh, talk about later. But I watched him, he was huge for uh, the US, obviously, in the World Cup. Billy USA! 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 <laughs> USA! Uh, I'll see if you've got his American accent. And uh, yeah, being great for Wigan as well. So uh, good to have them both on. I'm looking forward to chatting up soon. We'll find out if he's found any biggins in Wigan yet. That's it, Will. Uh, no, I, I spent a bit of time with Matty Bowen, as I said, a few weeks ago. And Eddie's name come up quite sure. a lot. Um, what's that? Cuzzy. Cause, yeah, yeah, and uh, he's, he's a great lad, fantastic player coming into his form at the minute. And uh, you know, I mentioned Eddie uh, a lot about how they've all settled in and how they've, they've gelled into Wigan. You know, Matty Bowen going from up red up Townsville and that to sunny old uh, Wigan there, raining big old it flowing Lancashire. Um, but we'll obviously, ask Eddie how he settled over here as well. Right then, uh, I'm going to pass you to Chew to to bring out our first guest tonight. Cherry and White Corner, weighing in at 75 kilos, the charmer from Chorley, that is Josh Chanley! <laughs> 75 kilos, some people for a winger might think, um, they, they might be right, but you, I think, I'm think i sure you weigh more than me, would you actually weigh, John? I'm 102. 102? 102. And I'm a back rower. Chew, dog, you, you, you never guessing, get these. Well, <coughs> miles off. Why, why don't you just ask him? He's just, he's just a, more fun a, to guess, Carol, Carol, see the 135 kilo. No, he did. <laughs> yeah, he did. What did Freddie say about that? <laughs> he's, he's took it on Chew. <laughs> yeah. Water through there, lad. How are you, mate? You all right? You need, you need, when you talk, I should do this before. When I do some mic training now, when you talk in the mic, you don't look at me, you don't look at Jonesy, you talk in the mic like that. The new mics. Okay. That's it, perfect. But then you kind of have to duck behind it so I can see your face. Yeah, I've got it. That's I've it, we've got I've a gangster lean going on. Yeah. It's like leaning. Yo. <laughs> Yo. So you're injured. Let's let's get that out of the way first. You sat here like Robocop in a brace. Yeah. Pretty low. I've got two. It's injured squad in here tonight. You two. It's tough for the league, mate. And uh, actually, I was talking about you today uh, when you used to play. You used to wear a scrum cap quite a lot, apparently. You yeah. play. Johnny Reynolds was telling me, he was back down at prop. You used to wear yeah, yeah. got knocked out a few times. Yeah, I got knocked out. I, I tackled my head, mate. I, 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 I'm a million miles an hour, mate. It's like, like last year when I played, I got the big suspension, 16 games or something. 11 games, 11 <laughs> games of fighting. I've just, got a, oh, I've just got a really bad temper. And like, when I get on pitch, I've, I change, mate. I've got See, a, 16 games for fighting? 11 you games. Off. No, I called the referee uh, uh, see you next Tuesday. Oh, no. And in rugby union, you can't abuse their officials. I got four games of fighting, eight games suspended for the abusing the referee, but then in the next game, I was fighting again and I got my full suspension. Sorry, have you played rugby union? Is that what you're rugby union talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, well, 16 game bans it. That's like a reward. Not, <laughs> not having to play rugby union. <laughs> hey! Wait, it's, I, I, don't, I don't mind it because you get like free dentists, free everything. Doctors, vets, they're all, they say, oh yeah, if you've got any problems, come to my surgery, I'll look after you. You've got you, you've got some decent teeth and all, haven't you? They're yeah, pretty pearly, them. They're alright, mate. Have, have, you, have you had some work done, it's just natural? No, nah, it's natural, mate. Mine looks like, uh, my teeth look like a, a, a graveyard, an old graveyard. <laughs> <laughs> like stones and that leaning everywhere. It's a right mess, a bit embarrassing, but anyway, let's get back to uh, Joshua. What, what's the verdict on, on the knee? Is it the knee? Yes, the, the femur and uh, tibia. What have you done? Explain it, you explain to me over there. Talking the mic, Josh. Talking. That's uh, it. I was uh, going for the ball, uh, and I was like bent knee a little bit. I was about, about to pick up the ball, and uh, the uh, the opposite player dove over the ball and like dove into my quad, and like I hyper extended it, but my knee was bent at the time, so it, it took a hefty whack back. Gutted. Yeah, killer. Like I say I, I got that injury right at the beginning of the season. The first day back, I got a hernia, and I've not had a pre-season. And I've I started getting a little bit of form back, and then this has uh, dragged me back down. Last year, you were phenomenal. 
How many tries did you score last year in one year? 36. Most ever? Oh, yeah, 36, yeah, yeah. Balling. Mm. Balling, big no, dog. Now I scored one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to start somewhere, haven't you, mate? Yeah. Um, are, you, are you a cranky injured person? Are you, are you one of these people who mooches around with a dog just like both pulling sad faces at each other? Or, or do you kind of, you, you just... Is it just really, really upset you? Like annoy you more than anything? Yeah, it does annoy you. Like I say you want you want to be a part of the the uh, the team, and you miss training on the pitch because you miss the banter between the lads. So uh, it's, it's quite depressing when you're in the gym on your own doing weights that you don't want to do, and uh, yeah, and you go home. You I say you're away from the lads because you train earlier or after the lads, and yeah, it's quite depressing. But I say it's just I want to get back and back playing as quick as possible. Talking about banter with the boys, uh, there's a lot of new boys at Wigan this year. You've lost some. You lost some really key players. Yeah. Firstly, how are you coping without the big players, without Sam Tompkins, without Harrison Hansen, with those kind of the characters within the squad? How's, how 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 do you feel like the squad's coping? Yeah, is it? We've lost a lot of players, but uh, like I said the players we brought in within Eddie and Mango and uh, Clubby and Sarge Batty. Let's like say we, there's a few good names out. You can. Uh, Replace the the players we've lost, so yeah, it's a, it takes time for a new team to gel. So it's, a, it's we're eight weeks into it now, so yeah, we're, we're slowly getting there. Right, we've got one of the new boys now. We're supposed to be Dan Sargison. I haven't spoke to him yet. What's his What's his pathetic excuse? He's got family over. Pathetic. Oh, they are. <laughs> but they are southerners. Yeah. Uh, but he'll be sitting around now, drinking shandy, eating cockled pickle pickle what are they? pickle legs, jelly deals, jelly deals. cockles. <laughs> Joey Dills, all right? Is he a proper? Is he? Does he wear chinos? Nah. Is he not? Is he all right? Is he a good bloke? Yeah, he, he's a good bloke. He's he's quick witted. He's quick. Yeah, uh, yeah. Club is a good lad. Club club is a proper geezer. Is he? Yeah. We'll get him on. Yeah. We'll, we'll bring we'll bring the geezers on yeah, next time. Right, Joe Dog. Next guest, please. Also in the cherry and white corner, weighing in at hundred kilos, the crusher from Christchurch, <laughs> Eddie Pettibon. <laughs> Crusher from Christchurch. I take that. I take that as a compliment, mate. <laughs> well, I had I had two C's this week. I had Christchurch and Chorley, so tough, tough choice. Eddie, how how are you, how are you enjoying life in Wigan? Ah, oh, it's been good. Um, you know, it's a, it's a bit different back home, but uh, yeah, enjoying it here. The, the, it's pretty cold, but um, you know, starting to see some sun right now. Back home in America or back home in New Zealand? <laughs> Uh, back home in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> um, how, how did you end up playing for America? Um, my mum's dad was um, is American Samoan, so uh, yeah, I got to get the allegiance to to go over there and represent USA. So did, did you did you have a camp in America? Did you go to America? No, we didn't. We were supposed to. Um, we end up just I end up flying a bit later than the boys. Yeah. So I just went straight to England and um, yeah, just met up with the boys and played there. The Americans, the Tomahawks, did very well. Was yeah, it, was it a good experience? Are you going to keep your allegiances to the Tomahawks? Are you a Tomahawk for life now? Yeah, no, nah, I'm going to stick to the USA Tomahawks. That uh, was a great experience. I um, didn't think we were going to win any games, but uh, <coughs> we ended up getting on top there. So uh, yeah, I'm nah, pretty proud of the boys. There was uh, a fair bit of publicity in America, wasn't there? I know New York Times uh, reported a little bit and I think... Wow, if we can get rugby league going in uh, in America, I know there is a super league in America actually. Isn't there? There's uh, there's uh, the Axe, Axe Men from uh, Jacksonville, and I think there's a few more in uh, New York. I don't know what they all are. I have to do a bit of research for Keith gets something back, uh, Simo. But uh, I know there were some lads in there that are fairly amateur in terms of rugby league. One of them was like a fire juggler or something. Wasn't he? Yeah, there was uh, there was a few coconuts as well. Um, like most of them um, didn't play any rip footy. It was only probably about three or four of us. Right. But uh, most of them were just working and. Um, probably playing once every two weeks and stuff like that so now I was they did well then yeah yeah now that's why I was pretty buzzing pretty buzzing and <laughs> just seeing those boys um, go out there and you know, play footy you'll be, you'll be you'll be a star in America eh? you'll be the best player yeah I was just waiting for Barack Obama <laughs> 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 and put me over to the White House mate you, you, it, it could happen <laughs> it, 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 we should we should make it happen see if we can get it sorted out rugby and Barack Obama Sweet, and Eddie yeah I was getting to Okay, I, re- I reckon if you tweeted him, he'd retweet you. Because it's anything for America, isn't it? Oh, you, I wish, I wish. You need, you just need to put a USA flag on your Twitter now. <laughs> Probably will now. Get a big blue tick then. Big blue. <laughs> the Air Force One job. <laughs> Flown around on Air Force One. 
<coughs> I don't think me and Eddie can go anywhere near Air Force One. We'll end up <laughs> in, uh, <laughs> with them beards. I think we'll end up in uh, Guantanamo and be <laughs> 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 What's, what, what's been your, your first impressions of Wigan, Eddie? What, 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 is it everything you expected? What we as somebody come into this country, obviously you get the deal and you must be pretty excited to, to move over a big opportunity. What what were your first impressions? Oh, um, no, well, I was um, coached under Medge, so um, I was um, everything over there was kind of the same that um, the way Wayne has it here. So um, yeah, I knew it was going to be you know tough training and um, you know everything's pretty professional here and. Um, but coming here as a town, into town was, you know, it was a lot different than back home. But, you know, I'm settled in pretty well and me and my fiancé are, are loving it at the moment. So, yeah. We won't mention any girls then. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Wigan is famous for biggins. As Joshua, I'm sure, will fill you in. He's the king, king of the big girls in Wigan. <laughs> um, have, have, you, have you seen the, the local sorts in Wigan walking around? No, not at this stage. Yet. There, there is none. That's <laughs> that's the point, mate. He's terrible. He's terrible. I went down along his bar. Have you been to Longy's bar yet? Yeah, Wim Bar. <laughs> yeah, he loves it. He loves it. Longy with his, with his cocktail on his hand. I went down to check it out. He stood there behind bar, proper proper governor, with a glass of wine in his hand. Ah, oh, Simo, Simo. <laughs> Meet the girls. <laughs> Yeah, Sean three Long. Yeah, three. <laughs> actually, when I went there, he had about fifteen girls in a booth. It, Sean Long and fifteen girls in a booth. Hilarious, absolutely hilarious. Respect. <laughs> Look at Jones is shaking his head. <laughs> <laughs> He's a man about town, Josie. He's a man about town. <clears throat> what do you think to the rugby over here compared to the NRL? Because we, we, there's been obviously a lot of our players going over to the NRL. You know, the Burgess boys, and they've done really well. Um, and more and more props, apparently. Uh, people are backing for Ryan Bailey again. Is that right? Yeah, the word on the street is that the clubs are looking at Bales. Obviously, he's had one or two. He's been in and out of team at Leeds, and um, a few clubs are in for him, so this should be interesting. Why do you think the NRL <coughs> like our prop so much? Because, you know, they're, they're pretty big boys, um, and they run pretty hard as well. So, yeah, no, it's, back in the NRL, everyone's a bit leaner and a bit fit up over here. So everyone's pretty big out here. And, oh, big in a good way, though. But, um, big like Shimmo. Yeah, big like Shimmo. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take it as a compliment, it's all right. <laughs> <laughs> nah, yeah, the, it's kind of good that um, you know there's players from the Super League are going to the NRL. Um, it'll be a great experience. And you know the Burgess is pretty well. They're good friends of ours on the show. Um, did you did you knock about with the boys yeah, in Australia? Nah, when I first met Sam, um, you know we went out a few times and. No, it was pretty hard to understand him because, you know, of his accent and that, but he's, he's more Aussie now. Yeah, he says uh, singlets and uh, thongs. I just shit my head. <laughs> yeah, he's changed. <laughs> You've changed. You've changed. Tom, Tommy still calls them vests and flip-flops, but George is well gone. George is fully Aussie. He's, he's gone. Yeah. He's George is killing it again this year. Um, they're not, the South are doing too good this, this year. Not a great start. Are you still following the results? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, my mum and dad are back home. My family are still red and green. Um, but um, yeah, the boys are struggling a bit. But um, they started, they got a win last week, so end this week now. So they're, they're on a roll now. A few injuries, but hopefully they get back on track. Jonesy, would you ever? You said you you'd never go to um, to uh, play news in, in in NRL. But what what? How do you think it is? You know, for players coming over here. You know, when when the, you know you had a lot of Aussies come over and settling into to lead squad squad. Do you find it? Do you think it's it, it's a massive culture change for him. I think for some of them, yeah, it's a long way. And I, I remember I was talking to Matty Bowen and he was talking about the uh, indigenous people there and they've got to travel four hours to go to uh, play for their lo maybe the local club. And uh, it's hard because they've been away from home. Some of them don't last that long and just want to go back home again. So, you know, for somebody like him to come all the way over here as yeah. well, you know, on top of that, it's a big lifestyle change. The weather's different, you know, you don't know people. And if things don't kick off really well for you, then it, it can be pretty depressing. It's hard enough as it is as a player who plays from your own town club. So I can only imagine that it's, it's a pretty tough uh, thing to do. But it's great that we do have those sort of players, you know, the, the mega stars in NRL. NRL is a great competition. I've got Premier Sports for sports the first time uh, this year and I'm really enjoying watching those NRL games. Uh, and it's brilliant that we can have them stars to make our great game grow that little bit bigger. Do you think it's a better game than NRL than the Super League? Oh, mate, mate, I've watched a few shockers. I'll be honest with you, some of the games were a bit, have been a bit uh, not 
as enough. I think probably week in, week out, uh, probably more competitive games, yeah, and you, you can't probably tell who's going to win as much, but I think Super League's getting like that as well. You know, we've seen uh, teams like Cass and Widnes, you know, pulling up some good results, and I know there's still quite a lot bottom, but that's more to do with the financial problems. If everybody had the same sort of money, I reckon it wouldn't be too far off over here. You know, everybody's got a lot of money in NRL. What do you reckon, Eddie? NRL better than Super League? I reckon it's both kind of the same. Um, playing, playing, playing the top teams here, like against Warrington and the Leeds and and Cusford now. Like you know, everything's starting to change. You now back in the days when I used to watch the Super League it was different, but over here it's growing and um, you know everyone's getting competitive now and even the bottom teams as well. So um, yeah, it's a, I reckon it's it's getting there. What what's um what's the what's the biggest difference in like is it, is it the biggest difference in lifestyle? Is it the weather? Is it the food? What, what, what have you, what have you noticed that's really different in uh, the UK? Oh, it's just cold, but to me, and you know, it doesn't bother me. Uh, back home in in New Zealand, to be cold, I'm still wearing flip flops. <laughs> 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 I, wear, I wear my vest sometimes in in training. Josh, Josh can tell you. <laughs> um, is it, it, obviously you played under Mad, so you knew what you were coming into system wise. Um, how, how was the training? Being, you got some good new kids coming through. T- tell us about some of the new players, Josh. In the in the squad, so we got a young uh, Joe Burgess who's he's after your shirt, mate. Yeah, he's after the number two. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but he says he's, he's he's come on the scene and uh, he's took it with both fans and uh, he's he's impressed everyone. And uh, I say we've uh, we've got Don Man Freddie back now from uh, Salford. He's another young kid who is keen and is willing to uh, impress. So he said the lads who are coming through the system now have, have probably been under the the same system we're at at the, at the first team. So. They know when they when they get the call up or get the chance they're they're not out of place and they know they know everything. I saw Logan Tompkins have a great game for Salford the other night against Bradford. Yeah. He, uh, he he played particularly well. He he just produced so many good young players at Wigan. Did, when Sam left, because obviously you got Matty Bowen, but you got two Lewis is it Lewis Turney and Ryan Hampshire. Ryan Hampshire, that's it. Yep. Two great young fullbacks there. Yeah. So is the future still bright for Wigan? Do you think this year you can you can challenge again? Because obviously. You, you you won everything last year, class all the way through. You didn't play particularly well stats wise without Tompkins. Do you think you can you can make up for that with the new players for this season? Yeah, like you say, everyone wrote us off again. Like you said, the players who we've we've lost, we've lost a lot of key players. Uh, when, when we've recruited well, uh, yeah, it's going to take time for us to gel, but we're slowly getting there, and yeah, we'll we'll come stronger to the business end of the year. Right, um, we're going to pass you over. We've got a special game review tonight, Jonesy. Let's first and foremost, <laughs> should we tell everyone how, how you recorded the game reviews? Let's t- let's tell them about what the Keith's beef. <laughs> Keith's <laughs> beef. So a couple of weeks ago, when he couldn't be bothered turning up, no, I couldn't get here. Um, he said I had to do a game review, so I did it in my own metaphysical way with my right brain. Talked about issues around it, read out a bit of score, read out a little bit of. Um, who, who scored the tries and who done what? But it was basically talking about personalities like we tried to do. Yeah. But Keith was upset that I'd not got very technical and gone into much detail. No, no. I asked you, did you see Matty Bowen's try? Yeah. Because I saw it on Instagram. Yeah. You know that dummy try last minute. Clap. Yeah. Absolutely. How is he? Is he that good in training every day? Oh, he cruises. Is it? Is, is, is it? Is it? Because <laughs> uh, Andrew Voss. I spoke to Andrew Voss in Australia, and I said, "Who's he, who do you think's the best player? Who's the best player you've ever seen?" And he said, consistently, the best player I've ever seen consistently, ever, is Matty Bowen. He said, and, and, I, and I was surprised, you know, you, you, you know, Lockyer, you know, what's his name, fullback um, from Mel, yeah, Slater. You know, some massive players over there, and he, he said Matty Bowen, so I thought, that's a, that's a big rap. That's Mate, a massive rap. Totally agree. And as, like I said, I, I interviewed him a couple of weeks ago from the column, and I wrote all this down. His class has got record amount of appearances for Cowboys. He's got the record uh, amount of tries. In, uh, he scored another one like that, which will air in game review for Wigan this week against uh, London. The last track of the game is unbelievable. Uh, I love it when Aussies come over. I like to watch them. If you think I'm going to watch every single try that everybody scores in a weekend for Keith, just in case you ask me the question, you're having a laugh. <laughs> but yeah. anyway, anyway, I went upstairs today and uh, I wrote a bit of a, a thing down um, <laughs> about what's going on in most of the games and I got under my bed sheets for a bit of soundproofing <laughs> and I recorded it as loud as I could on my phone told my kids to shut up in the next room we were shouting and bawling on Minecraft and that and I did my best but I thought I'll tell you what we'll just try and record a little bit so we'll go through two I've only done two we'll see, what it, see what it's like and see if it keeps a little bit better Wigan 36 <laughs> 1 and 14 Jamie O'Callaghan oh, no, no, start again, start again. I'll, I'll pass 
That's not very French. Right, we're going to pass you over now, live at the game. <laughs> Jamie Jones Buchanan at the Wigan match. Wigan 36, London 14. Jamie O'Callan scored early in the corner uh, after London chanced their arm and made the most of some speculative offloads. London turned up to Wigan like they were just going to go there, chance their arm, and we're going to go for it with nothing to lose. Uh, Mike McKeegan scored again, not long after getting on the end of a touch and pass style period of passing. London seemed to throw caution to the wind in this game. I looked like they were just going for it, uh, which makes it tough to defend, uh, to be fair, Wigan. What is it back, though, with a lovely crossfield kick from Blake Green that was plucked out of the air by Young Burgess before he offered it, offloaded it one-handedly to form a Bronco, Tony Club, who scored in the corner. Pettibone went close uh, after attracting four Broncos defenders to stop him under the post, and Blake Green took advantage of the tight London defence with a quick, uh, long ball out to the, another ex-Bronco, Dan Sargison, who scored in Wigan's uh, in the corner um, for the Wigan's second try. Blake Green played another part in the, the third try, feeding Thornley down the left edge with a well-worked short side play, 30 metres out, and Thornley's strength and agility was just too much for the London back line. After half-time, Tony Club scored a cheeky try early on in the second half, uh, which I think explodes, exposed the London youth when he just quick-tapped and almost dived his long frame at the London defence. Uh, Cook, being the only London player to respond, just ran straight past him, completely missed him. A uh, bit of a soft try there for London to let in. Sargentin, like his ex-London counterpart, uh, Tony Club scored another for Wigan after picking up another crossfield kick, uh, relatively uncontested by the uh, the London winger, and he put that down fairly easily in the corner. But London kept some respect to, uh, respectability though after a smart Scott Moore play uh, left him two on one with Darrell Gordon down the short side after a dummy one away, come out down the short side, uh, and it was a simple draw and pass. Um, to McCartney, who got the ball down in the corner. Thornley was the third Wigan player to get abrasive tries after he finished off the typical Wigan moves uh, from right to left, which was started in uh, the centre of the field by Sean O'Loughlin. Uh, Wigan saved the best of the last though with a big effort, a left to right shift deep in their own half with Matty Bowen making a break inside the centre, um, scoring another spectacular try in Matty Bowen fashion. Uh, and seems to be just about filling those proverbial boots left behind by Wigan superstar Sam Tompkins. Right, <laughs> nearly got caught then. Talking <laughs> off air. <laughs> oh dear. Um, great work, Jonesy. It's like an horse race, that one. Absolutely it? loved it. Loved it. <laughs> I hope Keith's listening. I want some feedback tonight, Keith. Keith, uh, keep up with listening. I've got a couple of questions for Josh, though. Go uh, it's funny, it's ironic, really. Uh, Tony Club and Sargison both scored braces. Uh, it's almost like you've picked the the best of uh, a, 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 a weathered London um, London group. I just wanted to ask you about those two guys. How they? I know you mentioned them a little bit. How they coming on? Have, have they been a big signing for for Wigan? Yeah, they say uh, Tony's been in the game for a amount of years now, and uh, he's coming about. He's uh, he's, uh, he's learning on the way, and he, he's he's coming to the uh, the strong side, and he's he's, he's doing well. And <coughs> he says Sarge is only twenty. He's young. He's uh, he say he's keen and. He still is willing to learn, and he says he's, he's in a I think he's in a good spot at the moment where there's a lot of uh, young lads who at the same uh, ability as him, and yeah, they're coming through strong. Um, if the worst did happen to London uh, and ended up going down or whatever back end of the season, um, who, which players there who are doing it tough the in, a, in, a, in a very bad environment? Um, who, who do you think will get harvested out of that group if you were to pick one, two, or three players? Who, who do you harvest out of that group the, now? The centre, Cat and Brown, what he's called. I can't remember his name. It's a good player though. He's Kate, got he's Kate, and Kate and Brown and the full back, the black kid, really, really he never drops a ball. He's really, really safe on the ball. Good description there. Yeah, uh, the black kid who can <laughs> catch black not many. <laughs> True though. What about yourself? Uh, well, you I, I don't know which one it was, I think it was the number eight. Uh, I think he was playing playing se uh, second row. I think he was he caused a little bit of trouble in was that sorry? Two was right. yeah, Oh right. Oh yeah, he was real strong. I saw some carries, yeah, yeah big yeah. strong thing. And uh, Crazy Scott Moore as well. I don't know if uh, it ended up anywhere else. Mad dog. I love him. He could he, he could come work with me. I would give him a job on radio. Oh, I could call. <laughs> He's awesome. Mate, I, I can't Just doing naked press ups all day and stuff like that. <laughs> sure Just looking at each you. other, going, "What can we do next? It's crazy. Let's just do something crazy." Dips. Dips. Yeah. Danny Bruff once told me that he's the loosest player he's ever met, and if Danny Bruff's saying that, that's that's some of that. Danny Danny Bruff, he ain't got he's got he's got nothing on, on Scott Moore. Danny Bruff, no, nothing at all. I, 
I'll give you my one day. I'll give you my top ten loosest players. <laughs> top ten loosest, and I, I've got a, got a hall of fame, and I'm still yet to meet one looser than me. So, if there's anybody out, actually, no, that's a lie. Two bobs. He beats me every time. Rob Robert Roberts. <laughs> Rob Robert Roberts. Three bobs. He's <laughs> yeah. actually called Rob Robert Roberts. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It's his name. Chris, <laughs> Christian name. Rob Robert Roberts. Like three or four of my if his parents would have called him Maimo. Maimo, Maimo, Maimo. Maimo, Maimo. Right, we're going to play a tune and we'll do some more game reviews, but excellent work, Jonesy. <laughs>